Hi everyone, this is Pastor Teresa at Beaver Ridge United Methodist Church. It's Tuesday. I am so excited to be here with you to give you a brief devotion and thank you for joining me. Today's been a beautiful day, perfect spring weather here in Knoxville, Tennessee. So I want to continue on with our story um, that we began in the days following the resurrection. So this is coming from John chapter 21. After Jesus was resurrected and before he ascended into heaven, he met a lot of people and a lot of stories. We, we have several stories here during those 40 days. So here's the one that's called Jesus and the Miraculous Catch of Fish. So afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and it happened this way. So the reader, or the writer actually, wants you to settle back and listen to this miraculous, incredible story. He was like, so it happened this way. You know how we sometimes say once upon a time? It happened this way. Simon Peter and Thomas, Nathaniel, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. So imagine they know the tomb is empty. They have at this point seen Jesus at least once, if not twice. They're still not quite sure. Uh, there have been brief experiences with Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, so they're not quite sure what's going on, but... Um, they decide to do something familiar. You ever been down and out or grief or depressed or something like that? And you're thinking, I just got to do something. And we tend to do, what's the thing that makes you happy? Well, for them, it's fishing. What's the thing that they're familiar with? Well, for them, it's fishing. So they decide they're going to go fishing. Peter goes and the rest of the disciples go. But they're out there all night long and they catch nothing and I'm sure their hearts weren't in it for them it was probably just good just to know that somebody just to know that they were together and they were in the boat that brings them comfort and they were doing something familiar I don't think they really cared so much about what they caught I think they were more interested in um, just being together and consoling themselves so they fish all night which is what the fishermen did at the time they fished all night and they caught nothing early in the morning Jesus stood on the shore but the disciples did not realize it was him he called out to them friends haven't you any fish and no they answered back and he said throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some and when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. This is so like us in life. We know how to do something. And if we do it the exact same way that we have always been doing, we are supposed to get exactly what we think we're going to get. But we all know that there just comes a time that no matter how uh, faithful you are to how it used to be done in the past, you got to do something different. They fished all night. They got nothing. Imagine you fish all night, you catch nothing, but a stranger, you don't know who it is, but they're on the seashore. They're watching you. And here they decide to call out to you and add insult to injury. Have you caught anything? No. He could tell their nets were empty. Ouch. That had to hurt. They're professional fishermen, or at least they were three years ago. They lost their touch. And then he said, the stranger yells out, well, throw your nets to the right side. I guess at this time they're thinking, well, what do we got to lose? We'll just show this guy that he don't know how to fish any better than we do. Throw their nets to the right side. They're, they catch so many fish, they don't even know what to do. It's overflowing with fish. That's so like our Jesus. That's so like God. Like, we're out and we're doing the very best we can and it's not achieving the results that we want in life. We're not being very successful or we can't bust through this one problem we've got or whatever we got going on. And then we hear the voice, that gentle, still, small voice or something that we know, voice from God telling us, do it this way. Try something different. Now I want you to know that to fish on the Sea of Galilee, 
that at that time, at least my study says that they were told to throw their nets. Everybody threw their nets to the left because if people chose left or right, well, your nets were going to get hung up, right? So with all the people else that were on the sea fishing as well with you. So they had some procedures. You throw your nets to the left, then I'm not going to get my nets tangled with anybody else. But here's this guy. He's a stranger. And he is saying, throw them to the other side. And they listened. And it was amazing. It was a miracle. They get this miracle. Their, their, their nets are so full. And then the disciple whom Jesus loved, we know that to be John, he said to Peter, it's the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and he jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore about a hundred yards. And when they landed, they saw a fire of coal, of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. I think in that moment when the stranger on the seashore said, cast your net to the other side. I think that is when, coupled with the miracle of all that fish in the net, I think that is when John recognized, wait a minute, I've heard this. I've been here. I've done this before. And I did it with Jesus. And I think that's when he recognized it was Jesus on the seashore waiting for them, calling out to them. And if you remember the story when Jesus was a rabbi just beginning his ministry, so three years earlier, where did he go when he went to go collect some of his disciples? He went down by the seashore and he told some of them, drop your nets and follow me and I will make you fisher of men. John remembered and as soon as he says it to Simon, Simon is diving in the water to get to God, to get to Jesus as soon as, as soon as he can. He's missed him and he wants to be there with him. So sometimes we have to be reminded of where God has been in our life to perform a miracle. We need to remember our miracles, right? Those miracles that God has given to us. Because there comes a time when we need to remember them. And they needed to remember that it was a miracle three years ago. And they got a miracle today. And when they realized it was him, they were getting it to him as fast as they can. They were going to get as close as they could to him. I love this. It, say he'd been there for a long time. Because you just don't build a fire and then have coals immediately. So he'd been on that, sore, that seashore preparing for them waiting for them and waiting for that moment to to let his friends know I'm here come join me so he's got the coals and he's got some fish already over the coals that are cooking and he's got some bread and and whenever they get to the shore the other side um let's see I'm sorry I lost my place here Jesus said to them Bring some of that fish you have just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and he dragged the net ashore. And it was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. You know, I love this little piece right here. You're like, why give us that detail? 153 fish? Who cares? God cared enough to give them 153 fish. They cared enough to count it because they knew that was a part of the blessing. And they wanted the details of the miracle. Things happen to us all the time in which God is blessing us. And I don't think we stop enough to count the blessing. And they knew, let's count the blessing. So when we tell the story, people won't say later, your net was only half full or you only had a couple of fish. They all know the miracle was so big that it was overflowing our nets and our nets didn't break. And if you're a fisherman who fishes with nets, you will know 153 fish is a huge miracle. So that's why they stopped and counted. And that's why we need to take time every single day and stop and count our blessings. Stop and count our miracles. God's given them to us. And they help us for those long nights when we aren't, when we're out doing the best we can and we don't catch anything. Nothing, nothing seems to come of what we're doing in our own efforts. But then when you see the Lord step in, we need to be able to count those miracles. And, and so we can tell the story again and to rejoice. And the net was not torn. Man. 
So Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. And Jesus came, he took the bread and he gave it to them. And he did the same with the fish. Now this was the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. I don't know what you're struggling with today. I don't know where you feel like you've been fishing all night and you can't solve this problem. And your nets feel like they're just empty. And are you ever going to catch a break? Whew. I hope you can find some still time. Time to be still. Time to pray. Time to listen to where God is calling you to cast your nets in a different direction. To maybe have that breakthrough. I hope that you find this place at Beaver Ridge, church, um, Bible study, uh, small groups, Wednesday nights, Sunday morning worship. I hope this is a place where you find the Lord speaking to you of where to cast your net, where to fish, where to go, where to do what you've been created to do. This is one of my favorite stories, actually, in the in the Bible, um, because it just reminds me that God is always waiting for me. He's waiting for me on my seashore somewhere. Am I am I willing to look? Am I willing to listen? And am I willing to do something different so that I can be in the adventure with God and I too get to count the miracle? So wherever you go and whatever you do today in the days to come, please stop and count the miracle and know that God is with you. He's either in the boat with you or he's on the seashore and he is preparing breakfast and he knows what you need and he's there. He's there for all of us. Now, I hope you'll join us Wednesday tomorrow night for dinner at 545 Mexican spaghetti and all the sides that go with it. Or come back on Sunday for Mother's Day and and um, let's worship at 10 o'clock and uh, and enjoy the Lord, the Lord's Day together. Thank you for all you do and for joining me. Have a blessed day.